What's up everybody? It is JT Sports. I'm back to you guys with another video. This video on here is my Clemson versus Ohio State college football semifinal preview and prediction. I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts and my prediction on who will win this game. So you have Ohio State versus Clemson. This is a rematch of last year's college football semifinal. These two teams met up in the college football playoffs back in 2019 of last year in the Fiesta Bowl where Clemson was able to pull off the victory 29-23. Trevor Lawrence had an outstanding game. I think that last year, this was the game in that Fiesta Bowl that put Trevor Lawrence on the map where everybody looked at Trevor Lawrence and was like, okay, this guy's legit. He was 18 of 33 passing for 259 passing yards, two touchdowns, and had 107 rushing yards on the ground for one rushing touchdown, which he had that big, I believe it was like a 50 or 60 yard run, I believe it was. I don't know, but it was just one of the most iconic plays that I can remember from the college football playoffs in a very long time. Justin Fields also had a pretty solid game as well. He was 30 of 46 for 320 passing yards, one touchdown, but threw two interceptions in that game. So you look at these two teams, Ohio State defeated Northwestern in the Big Ten championship game, 22 to 10, and Clemson dominated Notre Dame in the ACC championship, 34 to 10. Everybody's going to be talking about the matchup of Justin Fields versus Trevor Lawrence as both of these two guys are regarded as the two best quarterback prospects heading into the 2021 NFL Draft. For Justin Fields, Justin Fields has struggled this season against quality opponents. As a matter of fact, against the AP Top 25, he has thrown six touchdowns, five interceptions, and 732 passing yards. Hasn't been all that great. He's turned the football over, has made some really questionable decisions. For Justin Fields, this is a really big game because if he struggles in this game, then there is a chance that maybe he slides down to QB3 and Zach Wilson overtakes him for the second best quarterback heading into the 2021 NFL Draft. In the Big Ten Championship game against Northwestern, he was 12 of 27 for 114 pass yards, two touchdowns. Trey Sermon carried Ohio State to the victory, no pun intended. He was... He had 331 rushing yards, two touchdowns, was literally averaging over 10 yards per carry with 11.4 yards per rush. Trey Sermon was the reason why Ohio State was able to get the victory over Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship game. Because if the run game wasn't there for Ohio State and Trey Sermon wasn't there to save them, I don't think Ohio State wins that game. So for Justin Fields, he's going to have to play the best game that he's played all season. Because if he doesn't show up and he has another poor performance, then Ohio State is going to lose this game. Because if you guys watch my Alabama versus Notre Dame preview prediction, I told you guys how important great quarterback play is in the college football semifinals. Because at the end of the day, Justin Fields is going to have to be able to carry the load for Ohio State. Because I guarantee you that Ohio State is not going to win this game the same way they won against Northwestern. Just run the ball down Clemson Stoltz with Trey Sermon. Justin Fields is going to have to be able to make some tough. And he's going to have to be able to make some great throws in this game for Ohio State to pull off the victory. Meanwhile, Clemson is a 7.5 point favorite. You have Trevor Lawrence, who is a finalist for the Heisman Trophy this year. You have Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne, man, I think Travis Etienne is not getting talked about enough in this game. I think that Travis Etienne is more than capable of having a big performance in this game. You look at what he's able to do in the run game, what he's able to do in the passing department as well. Last year, Travis Etienne was big. He led Clemson in receiving yards last year. Last time these two teams matched up in the Fiesta Bowl, he had three receptions for 98 receiving yards, 36 rushing yards, and one touchdown. If Clemson's going to win this game, I don't really think that it's necessary, possible for Travis Etienne not to have a big game. But I also wouldn't count it out because you look at Ohio State's defense. This defense is really good when you look at this defense line, when you look at the linebacker position. This is a really good defense up front. But the weakness of Ohio State has been well documented that it has been the secondary. The secondary really concerns me for Ohio State. This is an inexperienced secondary. Your best cornerback in Sean Wade 
hasn't really played up to the level that everybody expected him to play when he was making that transition from slot corner to being that primary boundary cornerback on the outside, guarding some of the best wide receivers. The big play that Sean Wade had was that interception that he had against Indiana, which if it wasn't for him making that play, Indiana probably would have pulled off the comeback and they probably would have won that game. So when you look at this secondary and you look at Clemson's offense, uh... Unless Ohio State's defensive line gets consistent pressure on Trevor Lawrence, I don't really have a lot of confidence in Ohio State's defense. A lot of you Ohio State fans can say, well, J2 secondary has gotten better over the last couple of weeks, which is true, but you also got to look at it like this. What offense have you faced has really been that dominant as Clemson? You haven't faced a quarterback like Trevor Lawrence. The last time you faced a pretty good quarterback in Michael Penix, he shredded you. I believe he had five touchdowns, one interception in that game. So I don't really think that Ohio State's defense is going to be able to get a lot of stops in this game. I think that this is a game that if Ohio State's going to win, they're going to have to be able to go toe-for-toe on offense in terms of being able to score because you saw what Clemson did to Notre Dame who has one of the best defenses in college football and that thing was even close. Clemson on the other hand their secondary isn't all that great neither. Their secondary is a lot better than Ohio State's secondary but their secondary also has room for improvement with Chris Olave coming back which Justin Justin Fields was without Chris Olave in the Big Ten Championship game. He's going to be coming back Hopefully, that's going to help out Justin Fields because this wide receiving core for Ohio State, I'm not saying they're necessarily lacking in talent, but they just have a lot of unproven guys. I'm not going to say they're lacking in talent because I'm pretty sure they have a bunch of five-star and four-star wide receivers on the roster. They just don't really have a lot of proven guys on this team yet who have made their presence felt. So with Chris Olave coming back, I think that's going to be pretty big for Ohio State. You also got to look at the fact that Trey Sermon went off in that Big Ten championship game. He broke records. It was just a really outstanding performance against a really good Northwestern team. By the way, Northwestern is no slouch. Northwestern has one of the best defenses in college football. So the fact that Ohio State was just able to impose the will the way they did was really impressive. And you look at this game. Okay, if Ohio State has the same performance they had in the run game against Northwestern, then I think you will feel pretty confident about Ohio State's chances of winning this game. Because if Ohio State wants to win this game, I think they will want to keep Trevor Lawrence and Clemson off the field. I think that's pretty obvious, even though that does sound a little bit cliche. But you look at Ohio State secondary, it's not that great. It's not good. And you look at, I think that this game could probably go the similar way that Alabama and Florida went. I think that both these two teams are more than capable of putting up a lot of points on each other. But at the end of the day, I'm going to see whose defense is going to step up. Who is going to be able to get off the field on third down? And who is going to be able to get stops inside the red zone? When you look at the red zone, Ohio State's offense has not really been good in the red zone this year. As a matter of fact, they have one of the worst red zone offenses in college football. They are 102 in red zone scoring percentage, scoring touchdowns in the red zone 76.47% of the time. Meanwhile, Clemson's red zone defense allows teams to score touchdowns 83% of the time, which is 64th in America. So if Ohio State can't score in the red zone and they're walking away with field goals instead of touchdowns that's going to be really big the team who's able to score touchdowns in the red zone is going to be the team that most likely ends up winning this game because you look at how poor Ohio State secondary has played this year and you look at Trevor Lawrence I think he's going to be able to have a field day with the way that Ohio State has played on the back end of that defense all year. So if they can't score inside the red zone, they walk away kicking field goals, I don't think they're really going to be able to win this game. Meanwhile, for Clemson, you have to be able to account for Trey Sermon, and you're going to have to also be able to account for Justin Fields' ability to run the football as well, which is something that Justin Fields is really good at. He's one of the few quarterbacks in college football that runs like a running back, literally. Like, he's really big. What is he, like 6'3", 6'4", 220 pounds? So I want to see what the game plan is going to be for Brent, for Brent Venables in terms of trying to stop Justin Fields. Because Brent Venables, we saw what Clemson's defense did to Ian Book in the ACC championship game. The last time those two teams met, Ian Book made play after play using his legs, being able to extend plays outside the pocket, buying time for wide receivers to get open. 
I don't think Clemson is going to allow Justin Fields to dictate this game with his legs. If Ohio State and Justin Fields are going to be able to win this game, it's going to be because of what Justin Fields is able to do throwing the football, which Justin Fields hasn't been great throwing the football this year against good teams. So the team I'm going to take to win this game, I'm going to take Clemson to pull off the victory here. I think they do cover. Uh, I don't really think this game is going to be that close. I don't think it's going to be a blowout, but I don't think it's going to be that close. I think Clemson wins this game 35 to 24 is my final score prediction in this game. I don't like Ohio State all that much this year. Ohio State secondary isn't that great. And when you're facing a team like Trevor Lawrence, well, when you're facing a quarterback like Trevor Lawrence, you will want to have a good secondary. Also, on top of that, Justin Fields hasn't performed all that well this year. The passing offense hasn't really been all that great in terms of Justin Fields' decision-making. But if Ohio State was able to run the football the same way they did against Northwestern, then I like their chances of winning this game. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to which quarterback is going to be able to make the big throws when the game is on the line. I don't think Justin Fields is going to be able to do that. So give me Clemson to win. I like Clemson 35.